Hello and welcome to this, the Plymouth Gin Christmas Masterclass. My name's Jonathan. And my name's Tom. And together, but Tom in the main, is going, are going to take you through some of the history, some of the stories of Plymouth Gin and make some delicious drinks for us. We are indeed. So we're going to be talking about the history of this fantastic, iconic gin, why it's important to the cocktail industry, and also make some fantastic drinks to share around at the festive period as well. So, should we go through a bit of the history of the gin? Please, tell me all about it. Fantastic. So, it's the oldest working gin distillery in the UK. Uh, it's founded in 1793, as it says here on the top of the bottle, by a founder called Thomas Coates, who moved down to London to Plymouth. Now, on the front here, you can see we've got a Mayflower. Now, the Mayflower is quite important for Plymouth gin, purely because of the, uh, the founding fathers actually stayed in the, the area where the distillery is actually there and then founded obviously the New World from that point. On the back, you got a little kind of fryer. Now, do you know the story of what the fryer is? This I do. Um, Plymouth Gin is actually made at the Black Friars Monastery. It's the buildings that the monks used to live in. Uh, so hence the fryer, hence the, the, the monk on the bottle. And Indeed. I love the story personally, that when you get to the bottom of the bottle and his feet get dry, it's time to buy a new bottle. Exactly that. Uh, and also at the top here, you've got our little copper lid. This is a nod to our still that we have in the distillery. It's actually installed in kind of the mid 1800s uh, and it makes every single drop of Plymouth gin today. So everything you see from this premium gin comes from one single area uh, in Plymouth. Fascinating. Very fascinating, isn't oh, it? Is it time to make a drink? It is time to make Hurrah. a drink, I believe. If you like what we're, seeing, we're doing today and you want to share some photos of what you're doing at home, please tag at home of Plymouth gin. And also, if you have any questions, please put it into the chat box and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Cool. Should we make our first drink? Yes, please. What are we going for? So, first of all today, we're going to be making a pink gin and tonic. Um, this is a very historic drink. Um, it's not what you would call a pink gin and tonic today. It's slightly different. It comes from an old naval drink. Um, so, the use of it, actually, something called Angostura bitters. You have something like this maybe at home or you've seen it somewhere, mainly used in a lot of cocktails. And the idea for it is it was supposed to be good for helping seasickness. Now this is actually, could be a myth, but it's nice to know anyway. And some very clever sailor decided to actually put some gin in there as well. Very and sensible. It sounds very sensible yeah. guy, right? We're going to do a slight modern twist on this. So we're actually going to use some aromatic tonic, which has some Angostura bitters in there already. But we're going to be making it with lots of ice, a nice lemon wheel garnish, and obviously plenty of our Plymouth gin as well. So let me grab a glass. I've got an yeah, I was going to ask Tom, what do we need to make this drink? So, what we, need to, what we need to do for all the drinks today, but especially this one here, first thing you'll need is a jigger. Now, this is 25 and 50 ml. But if you don't have one of those at home, an egg cup will be great. So, an egg cup is around about 40 milliliters, or an espresso cup is about 75 milliliters as well. Or you can also use a mixing jug if you have one at home. You can okay. use that. Um, for today, we're using a highball glass. If you can have something that's nice and tall, so we can have lots of ice in there, that'll be fantastic. Um, and for the rest of the drinks, I'll go through what equipment we need. We'll go through the rest of the drinks as well. Okay. okay? So first of all, what you need for this is we need 50 mils of our Plymouth gin. Straight into the glass. Now you see a lot of people kind of ice up the glass first. Personally, I don't. Um, when you're pouring gin over to fresh ice, you start to dilute it quite quickly. Where if we add the ice in now, it stays nice and cold straight away. So that's where we kind of put okay. the gin in first. Next, lots of ice. And I believe behind you, you have the aromatic tonic. Am I correct? You are correct. Aromatic tonic. Wonderful. Now with this, what you want to do is you want to kind of pour it away from the ice. When you're doing that, when you're putting carbonated drinks straight over ice, you start to lose the carbonation straight away. So what we're going to do is just pour it away from the ice. And Tom, is it the Angostura bitters that make the tonic pink? Exactly that. So we're basically making a modern twist on a very classic drink now. Um, it's much easier to make at home. And now for the garnish, we're going to be using a nice lemon wheel. And what you can do with this as well is if you kind of got a little bit less in your drink, just top up with a bit more ice. Like so. And then with the lemon wheel, straight into the side there. So Johnny, do you want to give it a try? Love to, thank you. Go for it. Cheers. How's the taste? Very refreshing. 
So, Tom, can you remind me again, what's in this drink? Absolutely, so it's 50 ml of our Plymouth gin, and then about 150 ml of aromatic tonic, and then a slice of lemon in there as well. Lots of ice. Nice and simple, but utterly delicious. Utterly refreshing, right? Tom, what's the next drink, please? So, next drink we're going to be making is another Naval Connection drink. It's something called the Gimlet, uh, which is a very famous drink. Um, also very simple, but also very, very delicious, especially if you're using Plymouth Gin. So, this has got the same kind of history with the Naval aspect. So, the idea really was, during the kind of late 1700s, early 1800s, something called scurvy was kind of rife among kind of like Naval ships. Um, then, during the kind of like late 1700s, there was a uh, report about the use of citrus fruits and how that could actually help get rid of scurvy. Um, this was actually then put onto boats and they used lemon, sugar and actually gin to kind of help with scurvy, which I think is a great idea, right? Well, that's the Royal Navy, why not? Why not? Um, when we had a more access to things like limes, we actually started using limes instead. Um, but obviously limes do go off after a while. So a very clever man called Lachlan Rose came along and actually found a way of keeping limes without any alcohol preserved for a long time, made something called a cordial. And that's where we get Rose's Lime Cordial from. Now what we're going to be making today is what we call our fresh gimlet. So our fresh gimlet consists of 50 mils of our Plymouth gin, uh, about 20 mils of lime juice, and about 10 mils of sugar syrup in there as well. So we're going to be making that today. What you'll need for this is we'll need a short kind of rocks glass, so something like this. Uh, anything short like this would be perfect for it. Or what I call a tumbler. Or a tumbler, yeah. exactly that. You also need uh, something to shake with. So we've got a Boston shaker today, but if you haven't got one of those, you could use things like a jam jar, for instance, or you could use um, a protein shaker or something that you can basically kind of make sure it's sealed. We don't want to splash any gin anywhere, do we? We don't want to waste any kind of gin. Waste not. We don't want to waste anything here. <laughs> Once again, you're going to have to use your jigger for this as well, uh, or your egg cup, or your espresso cup, or anything like that at all. So first thing we're going to do, actually, when you're making a cocktail, the first thing you want to do is you want to put your kind of your cheapest ingredients in first. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in our lime juice. So we're using 20 ml of our lime juice in this. And that's your freshly squeezed Freshly lime squeezed juice. lime juice indeed. So now what you want to do with the jigger is it's slightly under the top. If you've got one of these, for an egg cup it's about half an egg cup pretty much. Straight in. Then we're using about 10 ml of sugar syrup in here as well. Now, sugar syrup, can you buy it? Can I make it? You, what is it? You can buy it for, from any kind of like major grocer. Um, you can buy sugar syrup already made. If you want to make it at home, you're more than welcome to. If you just grab like a, a jug of some description, uh, fill it up half with sugar and then half with hot water, and then just stir it until it becomes clear, voila, you have sugar syrup. Okay. It's also called gom as well. You might see it in shops called gom. Um, and it can be very easily made. You can keep it in the fridge. Um, I wouldn't you leave it in there any longer than a week, but absolutely fine to keep. Okay. Same with your lime juice. You want to keep that refrigerated. You want to use that within like three days or something. The fresher, the better. So we've got about 10 ml of sugar syrup goes in here. And last but not least, our Plymouth Gin. Now Plymouth Gin has seven botanicals in it. They all come from a place called Sutton Harbour, which is about 15 minutes away from our distillery. Um, come uh, is that why Plymouth Gin is from Plymouth? Because of the harbour? One of the reasons why was that connection to the harbour. It was a very busy kind of spice port and a very busy uh, port during the kind of late 1700s, early 1800s. And you had beautiful things coming in like Mediterranean juniper. Um, and one of the things that made Plymouth the kind of first real kind of style of premium gin was the idea of using kind of Asian cardamom in there as well and very much sweet orange, which was quite a new thing. Cardamom was very, very expensive in the late 1700s. So that's what made it quite a premium gin. Okay. Also the soft dark or water that you have around which is very, very good for the production of making gin. It gives that gin that nice kind of smooth element, which is really, really nice. Um, that's why we kind of went down there. And also the Royal Navy became one of our biggest customers. Why not go? Why not? Exactly. So what we're gonna do to this is you wanna add it full with ice all up to the top. Even if you're using a jam jar or something like that, just fill it up so obviously you can seal it at the top. Nice and sealed. Straight like this, once again, as sealed as we can possibly. And what we do from there, if you've got one of these, bottom hand here, top hand here, and then we shake. Okay, 
You just want to crack this open. First time. Congratulations. Could have gone completely wrong. <laughs> It'll come. Yeah, it'll come. What you want to do with your little grox glass here is fill that completely up with ice as well. Now, for the straining element, if you've got like a jam jar or something like that, you can just use the lid and pour it in like this. We've got something called a Hawthorne strainer. If you've got one of these, fantastic. If not, you can use just the lid of something as well. If you've got like a protein shake, you can do exactly the same thing. Or even a um, tea strainer or, or a sieve. You can use sieve. a sieve. Yeah, yes, you could use a sieve. Works. Anything that basically just stop all the kind of big ice cubes coming out would be perfect. Pour it straight in like so. Once again, we're going to grab our garnish. This time the garnish is very simply a lime wheel. And there we have our gimlet. Johnny? Oh, be rude not to. I know, it would have been there. Again, cheers, your health. So what you should get from that is the kind of, kind of sharpness you would get from a gimlet. So kind of that lime juice in there and the smoothness comes through from that Plymouth as well. So you get that kind of overall sweetness coming through, mm. which is very nice. It's quite punchy. It's, um, that's very good. Indeed. But they are very delicious drinks. Mm. Quite punchy, very good with Navy Strength Gin as well. Um, all very delicious. And remind me, what's in the drink again? So in there, we've got a double shot of our Plymouth Gin. We've also got about 20 mil of our fresh lime juice and about 10 mil of our sugar syrup in there as well. So the third drink we're going to be making now is we're going to be making something called uh, what most people know as a dry martini or a gin martini. Um, this has also got quite a fascinating history to it. Um, Plymouth has been widely known as one of the best gins to use in a gin martini. Um, it's mentioned over to, well, it's got 23 different re um, recipes in the Savoy cocktail book, one of the first real, real well-known cocktail books from made in the early 1900s by a guy called Harry Craddock. Um, it's a very simple drink to make but kind of depends on your flavours and what you kind of like. You can make it in a multiple different ways, either drier or a little bit wetter as well. So you've got different ways you can do that. Dirty. Dirty as well, if you want sorts. to use some olive brine, that's absolutely fine. So there is no definitive martini. It's very much a personal choice. Indeed. Cool. It's very much personal of what you guys really enjoy and what you want to have. I'm going to show you a recipe today that maybe kind of you'll enjoy, but you can also tweak it a little bit if you wish to as well. So this is actually a stirred drink. So we're not going to be shaking it up. Shaking basically aerates the drink. We don't want this for this dry martini as well. So what we're going to be using is we're using, once again, a fantastic, perfect for our martini Plymouth gin. We're also going to be using, normally you kind of use a vermouth in making a martini. So but actually today we're going to be using Lille. Lille is uh, what you call an aromatized wine. Slightly different, but basically still adds that kind of overall, uh, kind of slight dryness to it, which is very nice. It's wine based. So you've got that little kind of dryness in there, which is really, really nice. And we're not going to use a shaker for this, we're just going to use just a glass. Mm -hmm. You can use just a glass at home. If you've got like a vessel you can just stir in, that's absolutely fine. So even a jam jar would work for this completely. Just make sure it's clean beforehand, obviously. And then you can have a nice little martini glass as well. Okay. So we've got here what you call a Nick and Nora. But if you've got like a triangular martini glass or something like that, that's absolutely fine as well. And does the glass make a difference to the drink or is it... More just for your own pleasure. More for your own pleasure, I'd say. Yeah. The liquid is the most important so thing. If you about didn't the have a glass of a suitable martini shape, you could use, I guess, a wine glass or. Absolutely fine. You could um, use a wine glass, anything like that. That's, oh, that's absolutely fine as okay. well. What I would say for this, though, the first time we've done this, is you want to add a little bit of ice to the glass first. What we want to do is slightly chill it. Because there's going to be no ice in the actual drink, we want the glass to be as cold as possible. Okay. okay. So could put it in the freezer? Could put it in the freezer. Absolutely fine. Um, you could literally just, if you've got you know, some ice cubes, you just want to crush them up, get like a rolling pin, smash them up, put them in there, makes it really, really cold. Anything like that is absolutely okay. fine. So, for this drink, we're going to be having 50 mil of our Plymouth gin and about 20 mil of our chosen vermouth. Now, you can use any kind of vermouth that you like. You can use um, even things like Lille Rose works very really well in a martini. Anything like that is absolutely fine. Um, what we're going to do actually this time, though, is we're going to fill this all the way up with ice. Okay. Lots of ice. Ice is always best. 
Or as I've heard before, <laughs> this is nice. <laughs> so this is the way I was taught to make martinis. Um, I think it depends on how you're kind of taught to make these martinis, depends on how you make them. Um, some people use a little bit of ice first and top up with more ice. I just like to use lots of ice. And martinis are never shaken. <sighs> Well, if you speak to James Bond, they're always oh, yes. shaking. He drank vodka. He didn't drink gin. He did. Well, I would say, for me personally, a martini should never be shaken. Because oh. um, I believe you can actually sometimes put your bruise the vermouth. But if you want to shake it, absolutely fine. Like, however you enjoy your martini, just enjoy it that way. Um, that's probably the best way of doing it, I would say. So what we're going to do now is one of the reasons why I put the ice in first is because we actually want to get some dilution. So pouring the gin over the ice will actually add that dilution to start off with. So using 50 ml of our Plymouth gin. And about 20 ml we're going to do today of our Lille. As you can see, we're starting to dilute slightly. Now, we get a long bar spoon or a spoon, or have you got anything we can use for it? Chopstick? Or a chopstick. Any of that will work absolutely fine. I'm going to use a spoon today. Oh, get sorry, right one chopstick. One chopstick. One chopstick. <laughs> we want to get right to the bottom and give it a nice stir. You only got to stir it for around kind of 10 seconds, something like that is absolutely fine. Now what you got to do with the martini as well, is so once you get to that dilution that's already started, sure. get it out, give it a little taste. Delicious. Now, our glass is nice. We're just going to discard the ice. As you can see, the glass is nice and cold. We want to get our strainer again. We can just go straight in. Okay. Now, the garnish on this is a lemon twist. What we're going to do is we're going to grab our nice lemon. And if you've got a, like a potato, like a normal peel or something, you can peel it, that's absolutely fine. If you've got like a knife, you can do it like this. Basically, you just want to get a bit of it like so. Just kind of follow it round. Okay. Now, what we're going to do with this is we're going to basically try and extract as much of the oils out as possible. Because the first thing when you try to drink martini, you want that fresh lemon coming out straight away. So with this, what you want to do is just spray it over the top like so. Okay? I can see it hitting the top See it hitting the, the top of it, yeah. Give it a little wipe round as well. You can do it on the stem, so basically that lemon smell comes through straight away. Now this doesn't look great, so let's just trim it down a little bit. So we're just going to trim it down slightly. So one edge, another edge. And you can do anything you want at this point with it, but I just kind of do a couple of little triangles like this. You can make it as thin or as fat as you want. Do mine like this. Give it a little twist like so. Straight in. Voila. And that is your dry martini. Yeah. Your third drink, sir. Cheerio. Whew. Well, it is Christmas after all. It is Christmas. Absolutely. Great for an after dinner as well. Mm. Nice little drop for after dinner, which is great. Oh, no, very good. Nice. Terrific, Tom. Thank you for that. No um, worries. Could you just go through again, please, the drinks and their ingredients and how to make them? Absolutely. So, the so there's the first one. First one we have is our pink gin and tonic. So in here we have 50 mils of our Plymouth gin, 150 mils of our pink aromatic tonic, slice of lemon, lots of ice, because ice is nice. Very good. Number two. This is our fresh gimlet. So in here we have 50 mils of our Plymouth gin, 20 mil of our fresh lime juice, and 10 ml of our sugar syrup, shaken up over ice, slice of lime as a garnish. And then finally, number three. So this is our gin martini. So in here we have 50 ml of our Plymouth gin, 20 ml of our chosen vermouth, uh, stirred down, poured into a nice cold glass, 
and lemon twisted over it for that fresh lemon goodness. Very nice too. And I was just wondering, what about scaling these up? It's Christmas time, yeah. hopefully it's a time of merriment and people coming together. They'd be coming around and enjoying themselves and everything Absolutely, else. and yeah. rather than having to make each one individually for an amateur like me, it would take me a long time, how would I do this yeah. bigger? So, well, what we could do is if you make six of those gin and tonics, so the pink gin and tonics to start off with, and then what you can do is add four shots of your chosen vermouth, whether it be Lille or another vermouth, and then two shots of water in there as well, and you can what? freeze it. In, in the, the bottle. bottle? In the bottle, and you can freeze it, and there you have your martini ready to go. And it won't freeze in the freezer? No, nope. because Plymouth is over 40%, it won't freeze in the freezer. Even though that water added to it, it still won't freeze in the freezer. So just take it from the freezer, pour it straight into a glass with a, some ice and a garnish. With the martini, you can literally just pour it into the glass with some lemon in there already and just go around and pour it around if you wish to, you're absolutely okay, fine. So. Just make sure you keep it always really, really cold because there's nothing worse than a warm martini. You want a nice, cold, crisp martini. Uh, exactly the same actually with the gimlet as well. So. You make six gin, and gin, six, six gin and tonics out of the bottle of Plymouth. Then you add in four shots of lime juice and then two shots of our sugar syrup. And there you have pretty much our kind of gimlet. Good tip. Mm? Yeah, Thank literally you. very, very simple to kind of scale it up and kind of make it a lot easier to pour around. As long as you've got lots of ice and lots of, you know, lots of people to enjoy it with, then fantastic. Wonderful. So if you guys have any questions, please put it into the chat and we'll answer them straight away. Um, if you want to buy Plymouth Gin or even Lille, they're available in all kind of major retailers and online as well. So all kind of major online groups, they are available on there. So if you want to tag us uh, in any drinks you make at home or if you're making the pre-batch drinks or you've got lots of family and friends over, please put at home of Plymouth Gin and tag us on Instagram like that. I really hope you've enjoyed this session. Uh, I have. Um, you might have guessed I'm a bit of an amateur. There are five more sessions across uh, different products, not just gin, coming up. Just uh, do tune in if you want to learn more. Um, kind of think that's it. That's it from us. Just going to wish you a very Merry Christmas. And a Happy New Year. Yes, indeed. Goodbye.